Most Muslims live far better lives than their Prophet lived. But since they know next to nothing about their Prophet, they think that their Prophet lived a far better life than they're living. The result is that they constantly condemn their own Prophet without realizing it. Let's look at an example. A few hours ago, I posted a video titled, The Biggest Obstacle to Reaching Muslims Is... And here we have a Muslim response to my video. David, as a Muslim, I know what you think you're doing is right, and you're convinced enough where you can't be told otherwise, and you obviously know I disagree. But from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely hope Allah guides you to the straight path. Also, as hurtful as it is to see you make videos mocking my beloved Prophet like your video from yesterday, I do not wish death upon you, and I also condemn those who do wish death upon you. As a word of advice, just be respectful, man. Well, Brisk, I'm afraid that's a no-go on the being respectful part, because I know you're referring to being respectful towards your religion. I'm pretty respectful towards people. Ideologies that oppress people? Not so much. But what I find interesting, Brisk, is that you actually agree with me. You just don't know it. But you're about to know it, all thanks to me. Notice what you said. I do not wish death upon you. That's nice. And I also condemn those who do wish death upon you. You condemn those who wish death upon me. If someone says, David makes satirical videos about Muhammad, so he needs to die, you condemn that person. But he's not the only person you've condemned, Brisk. Welcome to the D. Woods School of Islamic Instruction, where you just got a scholarship. When Muhammad took Mecca, he gave his followers a list of people who were to be killed even if they were found hiding beneath the curtains of the Kaaba. Let's read about three of them in Ibn Asak, pages 550 to 551. Another was Abdullah ibn Qatal of Banu Taym ibn Ghalib. He had become a Muslim, and the apostles sent him to collect the poor tax in company with one of the Ansar. He had with him a freed slave who served him. He was a Muslim. When they halted, he ordered the latter to kill a goat for him and prepare some food, and went to sleep. When he woke up, the man had done nothing, so he attacked and killed him and apostatized. He had two singing girls, Fartana and her friend, who used to sing satirical songs about the apostle, so he ordered that they should be killed with him. Think about this, Brisk. Abdullah killed someone and apostatized. So Muhammad ordered his followers to kill him. But Muhammad also issued a death sentence for the two singing girls, and all they did was sing satirical songs about him. So according to your prophet, what's the penalty for making fun of him? Death. According to your prophet, what should happen to me? I should be killed. But you said that you condemn Muslims who wish death upon me. Hence, you've just condemned your prophet. Let's read another passage. In Sunan Abu Daud 4361, Muhammad makes it clear that brutally murdering someone is perfectly acceptable as long as the person made fun of him. It was narrated that Ikrama said, Ibn Abbas told us that a blind man had a female slave who had borne him a child who reviled the prophet and disparaged him, and he told her not to do that, but she did not stop, and he rebuked her, but she paid no heed. One night she started to disparage and revile the prophet, so he took a dagger and put it in her stomach and pressed on it and killed her. There fell between her legs a child who was smeared with the blood that was there. The next morning mention of that was made to the Prophet, and he assembled the people and said, By Allah, I adjure the man who did this to stand up. The blind man stood up and came through the people, trembling, and he came and sat before the Prophet. He said, O Messenger of Allah, I am the one who did it. 
She used to revile you and disparage you, and I told her not to do it, but she did not stop, and I rebuked her, but she paid no heed. I have two sons from her who are like two pearls, and she was good to me. Last night she started to revile you and disparage you, and I took a dagger and placed it on her stomach, and I pressed on it until I killed her. The prophet said, Bear witness that no retaliation is due for her blood. So, a Muslim killed the mother of his own children for making fun of Muhammad. If Muhammad didn't want his followers doing that sort of thing, this would have been a really good time to say it. Instead, Muhammad said that there was to be no retaliation against the man for slaughtering the mother of his own children. Muhammad didn't condemn a man for killing the mother of his own children. Why? Because the man killed her for making fun of Muhammad. But you've condemned the man, just as you've condemned your prophet. What do you think Allah would say about you, condemning your own prophet? We don't have to wonder because he tells us in Surah 4, verse 65 of the Quran, Allah proclaims, But know by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept them with full submission. As we've seen, Brisk, you have a lot of resistance against Muhammad's decisions, and you don't accept them with full submission. You condemn them. Hence, according to Allah, you have no real Islamic faith. You're an apostate, according to your God. So, Brisk, you and I are united in condemning your prophet. The only difference is, I know that I'm condemning your prophet, while you don't know that you're condemning your prophet. But you know now, all thanks to me. <laughs>